Monica is a very brave lady and I'm delighted as always to have her here on Outsiders with us. Monica, apart from all your other travails, which we could talk about for hours, but I particularly want to talk to you. You've become an absolute heroine in the freedom movement around the world. You've travelled around the world, spoken at many events. Um, but you've taken this issue of cash to heart. Now, uh, last week uh, I talked about Tuesday being the cash day, you know, take cash out of the ATMs. Many people came up to me, they clearly supported this. Shopkeepers and others said to me, what a great thing, thank you for doing it and pushing it. Monica, you were behind this. This is pretty much something that you are very much involved with and pushing for, so tell us about it. Tell us about the success and why you believe it was so important. Thanks, Rowan. Thanks for having me again. And thanks for reminding me of uh, prison on a Sunday morning. But anyway, we'll get past that. <laughs> Look, i got to be honest. Um, no one actually knows who started the Take Cash Out Day on Tuesday. No one knows. Probably the person who did it knows. But the reason it was so successful, and I wasn't behind it, the reason it was so successful is because it was organic. One person came up with an idea. It wasn't branded. No one put their name behind it. It worked because it was a good idea. And it worked because Australia in especially my audiences, I guess you could say, we have tried so many things, Rowan, and as you know, a lot of them have fallen on deaf ears. And taking cash out and spending cash is something that everyone can do, which is very empowering, and it belongs to nobody. And it also goes across so many political spheres, like left and right, whether you've had... 10 jabs or no jabs, everyone wants to keep cash alive. And that's why the campaign is working really well. So nobody owns it, Rowan. Isn't that great? It's good. Mm -hmm. But tell us why it is so important, in your opinion, Monica. It's so important because people don't want to lose the freedom of being able to spend cash where they want to without anybody knowing or without, like, even things like um, putting $5 in your grandchild's birthday card. All those things would be taken away. You know, you can't do friends for your, you can't do jobs for your mates for a bit of cash or a bit of beer or this, that and the other. And those are the simple things. But then, of course, you've got the sinister things like, obviously, the government tracking you and potentially restricting the sorts of things that you spend money on. Spend money on. For example, myself, Rowan, during those times, uh, I wasn't really the government's best friend. And I wonder if if there was a social credit system, I wonder if I would have been able to go to the grocery store after doing those social media posts. And that's the more sinister side of things. Well, well tell me about this digital ID because it's it's gone through. Um, it's it's there. The, the government will tell you it's entirely voluntary, so there's nothing to fear there. What, what's your take on it? Remember last time Katie Gallagher talked about voluntary things with the <laughs> mandates? Well, that wasn't so voluntary. So I don't think people really trust people like Katie Gallagher as far, far as they can throw her. But look, what I, the, the practicality of digital ID is that it's going to take a while for them to bring in and they couldn't even do contact tracing properly. So I don't really have high hopes for them actually being able to do this anytime soon. But of course, how will they keep our data safe? I mean, you had the Medibank um, data breach, you had the Optus data breach. There's been others as well that we don't even know about that isn't publicised. So I think people are really concerned about all their data being in one place because anything online is hackable. That is that is the internet. So um, I don't think it's coming in anytime soon, but I think people are afraid of it and I think they need to understand that they can say no at some point, I hope. James. What do you say to people who say, oh, well, you know, the government already has so much of my data, so much of my information. I mean, Anybody who deals with different government agencies, you know, knows they all know what your income is. They all know your health status. They know all of these things already. What do you say to people and how do you explain that this is actually a much bigger leap beyond already the data matching that the government's already able to do through things like, you know, the MyGov website and the ways that connects to different agencies? Yeah, look, a convenience is what's going to sell this to people, of course. And um, I don't know, a lot of people have recently realised how sinister people in the government can be. So they signed up to these things. And I did myself as well over the last 15 years thinking, this is great, you know, I can tap my phone, I can do this, I can sign into my MyGov. I think it's only recently that people have realised that in the wrong hands, 
this sort of data being in one place is a real concern. So a lot of people aren't going to care. You're right. But I would say to them, do you trust the government with all of your data in one place? Do you trust them to keep it safe? And I have had nobody be, a be able to say yes to that answer. Mm. But Monica, you raised a really important point that uh, you were kind of... Uh at odds with the Andrews government. They were following you around, they threw you into jail. I mean, it can't get any, any worse than that. But it could have been worse if they'd done what uh, Justin Trudeau did in Canada to people doing no more than what you were doing, which is protesting against lockdowns and uh, mandates, um, vaccine mandates and so on. Um, they actually did stop them accessing their money, stop them being able to get any cash to even feed their kids or fill up their cars with petrol. That is what a left-wing government did like that, without even bat batting an eyelid to hundreds of people. So I think you were right to make the point that had the Andrews government been able to, it probably would have done similar to you, would be my contention. Would you agree with that? Well, I am actually really grateful in a way that Justin Trudeau did that because it showed the world that it's possible and he didn't have to justify himself. And I remember a grandma got her bank account closed because she bought one T-shirt to support the truckies. Yeah. So, um, and then Nigel Farage had his account blocked in the UK. So now when you're starting to talk to people about these potentially, these things happening, um, it's more realistic to them and they can understand. So it's actually... It's actually a good thing that Justin did that. So thanks, mate. Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well done on supporting the cash out thing. I mean, the, the trick is, of course, Monica, to keep people using cash and not just doing it on that one particular day, but people getting used to it and using it. And anecdotally, that's certainly what I'm hearing. A good use of people's cash would be to buy your book, Sell 22. And uh, <laughs> Rowan. It's, it's a great read. So people, you may not want to relive your experiences at the hands of the Andrews government, but I think there's plenty of people who should read it and would in, it certainly uh, find it riveting read. Thanks so much, Monica Smith. Always great to chat to you here on Outsiders.